Let's get started. So today we're going to talk about charting libraries and this uh, third party APIs, but um, and we're going to use char charting libraries as the example, and then we'll use rapid API as just a way to grab some actual data. But let's kind of talk about, I know my group, you're probably going to want to use a charting library. I think the other group said you're not. Um, it's really, I mean, this will be a little on charting libraries. But this is also just on, you know, a little how to use some of the like a third party JavaScript library or like a third party API or third party, um, you know, RELS library um, with, with your projects. Um, because with, with code, there's definitely going to be things. Um, I mean, if you're looking at something like charts, that's probably something you're not wanna, gonna do from scratch. Um, it'd be a lot of work to create your own charting library. Um, and you know, that, that would be quite the undertaking if you, and if all you wanted was like a simple like bar chart or something. And the other thing is like, there's, there's tons of, uh, in, in the software world, there's tons of open source, you know, projects that are available for you to use that are like free of charge. Or, or you know, maybe they do have a, there is a fee associated with it and it's worth it because otherwise it would take, you know, a couple hundred hours to build it out yourself. So, and you know, this could be for like charts, it could be for tables, it could be for, you know, UI stuff, it could be for um, encryption. Like you, you're not gonna wanna write your own encryption algorithms. You probably want to use a library for that. So there's, there's tons of code that's already out there. So when, <clears throat> when you're kind of trying to um, pick a library, there's, there's some things you want to consider. Um, and you know, th there's there's definitely going to be trade offs. There's usually pros and cons, but um, when using you know third party libraries, so I think there's some things you want to look at or things you kind of want to consider, and kind of balance these things. So the first one is you know when you're looking for libraries, you want to see how well does it match your use case. Sometimes it's like gives you exactly what you need. Other times, you know, you're gonna have to tinker. So, because uh, when we look at something like charting, we're gonna see there's not just one charting library. There's gonna be multiple we could choose. So in deciding which one to choose, this is one thing we wanna look at. You know, does it match our use, uh, use case or how close is it to it? Another thing kind of aside, like a, kind of tangent of that is, you know, is the library customizable? And if so, how difficult does it seem to customize it? Um, so maybe, you know, this library is like matches 80% of your use case, but it seems very hard to customize it to grab that other 20%. So you kind of got to make that decision. Well, do I just kind of use that 80% or do I need to look somewhere else? Um, I think there's generally a trade-off here. If something's more customizable, that probably is going to, um, more often than not, that's probably going to, you know, maybe relate to that. It's going to be a little more difficult to use. Something that's less customizable, it's probably going to be a little easier to use. Um, when you're looking at like a repo, some things you might want to also look at is like, when was the last commit? This is, it's just kind of checking like, is this repo being maintained? Does it look like they're actively working on it? Are they like fixing issues? Um, that kind of thing. How many stars does the repo have? Kind of like the popularity. Um, a more popular library is more likely to be maintained. A more popular library is more likely to have, you know, questions on like Stack Overflow or like, like 
examples on like Code Sandbox. So there's going to be more resources generally, the more popular a repo is. Um, another thing to look at is who is the owner. Um, you know, like for instance, React is maintained by Facebook. So Facebook is, you know, has the resources to kind of throw money at that project. You know, material design is <clears throat> maintained by Google. So <clears throat> that can sometimes be a good, a good thing to look at because it's kind of like, once again, kind of relating back to like, is this going to be maintained? Is, are they going to add features to it? Is it actually being used? So Facebook actually uses React. So, you know, they're going to maintain it. There's, there's going to be ton of documentation with it. <clears throat> um, looking at like the issues, <coughs> sorry, we'll kind of look at this in GitHub. Kind of looking at how many open issues does this repo have? Once again, just kind of going back, does it look like it's being maintained? Um, so you can get, kind of go look through the issues. Are the issues well documented? Um, that's another place you can kind of like find answers to um, questions you have. You know, you, you can even go explore the code. This is all open source, it's on GitHub. You know, some of these might be smaller, so you could even go in and tinker around in the code a little bit and check it out. Another thing you want to consider, like, do they have like demos? Try them out, kind of once again, maybe matching how well does this match your use case? Um, and then you can also maybe code, you know, maybe write a small code snippet using the library. Is it intuitive? Is it giving you what you want? So just some things to think about because, I, you know, a lot of the times when you're picking a library, there's a couple different options. And we'll see that with charts. So yeah, today we're just gonna use charting as kind of like an example to kind of go through this process. Um, so we're going to pick out a charting library today. So we'll look at a couple different examples. Um, so if we're like specifically looking at a charting library, um, I might look at these things like, what kind of charts do we need? You know, do we need these charts to be interactive? Um, how customizable do we want it? You know, what is our gonna, what is our data going to look like? That kind of thing. So let's just go through and um, looking at some charting libraries and how like I would maybe go about doing this. So I think with today, if I'm looking at like, um, you know, we're, we're maybe gonna do this, we're gonna use this COVID-19 API document uh, API. You know, it looks like this with like the data we're getting back. Um, Looks like we're getting some country information, some population, you know, maybe active, critical, recovered, you know, per 1 million population. So we're kind of getting some numbers, like how many cases do we have per population? How many deaths, total deaths have we had? How, how many is that per million? And, you know, we could do this for multiple countries. So, you know, we could do like some bar charts, we could do some, um, maybe pie charts. And so that's just kind of the data I'm working with. We could do it, you know, we could think of a lot of different things to do with this. So let's just go through and look at some charting libraries. So if I was like starting out from scratch, and like trying to find a charting library, I might Google something like this. It's like a basic top, you know, React charting libraries. And just also know like a lot of these are just articles written by people. So there, there's gonna be some opinion in here, but it, it just, 
it's at least going to maybe start giving me some ideas of the charting libraries out there. So I can go in and kind of just start you know, exploring some of these. So I'm going to like, you know, um, go to their website. Oh yeah, I think one thing I might have skipped over. I really think a big thing with like a third party library is how well is this library documented? Um, because you know you're 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 going to be using something you haven't used before, so you're going to want like a good guide. Maybe you know they 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 have examples. So this one seems to have like a lot of different examples. They have some code, you know, they have documentation about, you know, the props you can give it. So just, just, you know, a quick look at this one. You know, I think this would be a good contender for something we want to use. Um, Cause it looks like it, it has good documentation. Um, I could go check out the GitHub. You know, just briefly kind of like looking at the commits. You know, we have one 22 days ago, 29 days ago. Could also just, you know, look at their commit history. And, you know, this looks like it's being maintained because they have like commits this month they have commits you know from last month so I could look at their issues now 304 issues might sound like a lot of issues but um, you know I can come in here I can see they have like 300 open issues they've closed 2000 so you know and it looks like a lot of these might you know have some like a thread going on there. Um, so stuff like that. So it looks like these are, um, you know, active. I could go in and look at some of the closed ones. You know, cause this can be, I don't know if any of you have like found um, solutions to answers on GitHub issues, like on a GitHub issue page. Has anyone found what you're looking for on here? So this can, this can sometimes be a, a good spot to find um, solutions to problems. I mean, because I can come in here and write a comment. So this is like a public forum. <clears throat> I could also go into recharts and create an issue. Looks like they have, and like, so they have a, a specific way like if i'm creating an issue you know they're going to want you know me to follow their kind of guidelines um but i could come in here and be like you know whatever bar chart doesn't work and then you know could explain what what was going on what i thought the issue was We'll talk a little bit more about um, like issues and you know creating bug reports um, in the coming weeks, but that's what that is. And then I could throw that out, and then maybe you know someone maybe not even associated with recharts could fix it, and then create a pull request to recharts. So it's it's part of the open source community where it's like. Me not being affiliated with recharts, I can create an issue. I could also maybe figure out the issue, create a pull request, and then say, hey, recharts, would you look at this and see if you want to fix it and merge in my pull request? Or they might have people working and you know kind of maintaining this who would fix it. So um There, there's, that's just kind of the, the, the example, you know, I'm looking at maybe looking at the styling 
it looks like they have you know really good documentation um and it's like i said this is it being popular i know i can probably go find some other um examples or like outside examples documentation about recharts there's this react charts js2 um chart.js did they change this okay so i could go look at once again github's always a good place to look you know four thousand stars that's quite a bit um looking at their commit history you know two months ago that's you know that seems fairly active 16 days ago i mean i'm not sure what's probably not much going on there but last month you know, so it looks like they are, you know, maintaining this. There's our commits, got a lot of commits. That looks all automatic commits. Just bumping up dependencies. Um, yeah, they have a quick start. It looks like they have docs, um, examples. So again, you know, with something like a charting library, I would definitely want um, like them to have probably their own website. That's kind of showing how they use stuff. <coughs> so yeah. You know, I think this one could work too. It, could, it might even be at this point, you know, I might decide based on which one I think looks better or which one might fit my app a little better. Cool. Um, but yeah, as far as customizability of these, you know, I, I think with a lot of this, like I'm kind of getting what I'm seeing. Might be hard to customize some of this, but it looks pretty straightforward to use when I look at this. Um, there's another library. I wonder if in if this would come up in a search. Let's just do best charting libraries. You know, I might not, I know I'm using React, but I don't have to use a React charting library. Um, so there's other charting libraries, um, NVD3. Actually, do not know what this is. Oh, it sits atop the D3 library. Okay. Um, so there's that one. It's with charting, one you're going to see, <clears throat> if I were to say there's like, uh, like the best open source charting library, in my opinion would be it's probably, I don't know, unless there's something new that's come out. D3 is a good one. Um, let's go to D3 GitHub. Like this has 22,000 stars. Oh wait, sorry, it has 100,000 stars. <clears throat> um, this one uh, is, D3 is a, a really cool library. Um, where's their website? Have me on their wiki page. I mean, they are, they have tons of uh, documentation. I just want to maybe show some of the things with D three demo. Is it? Yeah. So here's D three. Um, D3 is a library you can do like tons of uh, <clears throat> crazy graphs.
like this like really interactive type stuff. Um, where's like, if you, I don't know if you ever read like the New York Times and they have like all those cool like interactive graphics, that's like D3 probably under the hood. So you get like all these like nice cool little interactive like charts you can create. Um, they do a lot with like the election stuff or like these, you know, US maps. Like here's one, like, I guess, yeah, what direction the states are moving as far as political views. So I don't have, have does anyone read the New York Times or like see any, like, especially like during like election cycle, you can like go zoom in and like go in and click on the map. That's generally, it's probably gonna be D3 if it's the New York Times. Um, yeah, stuff like this. Now, the issue with D3 or like the trade-off with D3 is um, D3 is really customizable. You can create a graphic like this. Um, the trade-off though is it's not simple. <laughs> it's more complicated. So if you really, you know, if you're working at like a news organization and you wanted to have like, you know, kind of more of this crazy interactive UI graphic, probably I'm not going to be able to utilize that with recharts. Like I'm not going to probably be able to find that with recharts. Um, I'm going to have to pick a different library like D3 that gives me more of that customized, like where I can customize it. So, um, but yeah, it, there's a ton of documentation on D3 and there's tons of examples, but there's definitely a huge, huge learning curve to this. It'd be like learning React. So there's just like tons you can do with this. Like things you can move around. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but. But, and these are all interactive. I click on all of this and then it's kind of going through some quotes. So. <clears throat> and a lot of, um, I'll just say this, a lot of these libraries, like recharts, these React libraries. I bet if I went and looked at GitHub. Yeah, see, recharts is a redefined chart library built with React and D3. So a lot of these libraries, they'll be using D3 behind this, the scenes. So it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to use. Does that kind of make, Makes sense when you're like going through these libraries, picking them out. Um, there is usually generally this trade off of how much customizability you get versus ease of use. And, and chart charting's like it's it's I like looking at charts because there's there's tons of different um, charting libraries that have you know different pros and cons. So. I think for today, we'll just use recharts, um, but you know, there's, there's not like a right answer sometimes there's, cause there's a lot of different um, libraries out there. It just depends what you want, but I think we're gonna keep it fairly straightforward. So I think um, any of these would really work for what we want. So, but I think like something like this, you know, might work well for us because we could maybe do like uh, the country and then we might be able to do like the, like cases per country or something like that. So let's go ahead and use this. So to install it, um, we just need to add recharts. So um, <clears throat> let's 
let's just go ahead and create a new project for this. So, and this will just be a React app. It's called chart demo. Chart demo W21. All right, so I want to yarn. Let's yarn add. Let's do Axios and um, retries. Those two libraries we're going to add, and then we can just open this up in code. All right, I'm just going to create a new file and call this. Um, let's just get a chart up here, chart demo, just to make sure that we can get this working. So I'm gonna um, just take, which one do we want to use? Sure, let's do a bar chart. I'm just gonna take this whole component copy and paste it inside of here. And then I'll throw that out in Slack too. So it looks like they're using a class component. We could either <clears throat> switch this to a functional component or we could just keep it as a class component. Let's, let's keep it as a class component just to uh, do a little review because we'll um, probably end up doing an Axios call here in a second, but let's just get this working. So in my app.js, I'm just going to get rid of this. chart it's not auto importing so I guess I'll just do that manually import chart demo um. okay that's fine dot chart demo. <clears throat> so I'm going to start this up. My server here and start. Not seeing my chart there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and that is here. So I'm just gonna say chart here. 
Okay, where's my chart? Zero. Okay, why is that zero? I don't know. There seems to be something up with my this. I mean, I just copied and pasted this. It's not working. I have my data. I'm gonna get rid of this responsive container. Okay, that's causing some issues. Okay. I, I don't know why. Um, but anyway, there's my chart. Cool. So I have that working. Something I could do just inside of here is like, Maybe I kind of want to like guess how I want this to look. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hard code some data right now. So maybe for the name, I'm thinking I want this to be like the country. And for this, I want to have like, um, let me go, let's actually go to this documentation and see what we have. So we have cases, let's do, um, let's do new active, let's do new and active. And yeah, let's just do new and active for now. Or I could do, yeah, let's do new and active. New. So instead of saying UV and PV, I'm going to call this new and active. So if I look at this, this X access data key, it's matching is name. So that's what I want to match there. So that's that's matching. Maybe this would be like country. And then down here, I would switch that to country. So the David, and I'm kind of just like, um, just guessing here. So they have another data key that was PV and UV, but that's what we just switched there. So I'm sure now I need to match these keys to it. So this is going to be the data key for new and this is gonna be the data key for active. I went back and looked at my chart. You know, now I have a chart that's, you know, where I have the country at the bottom I have like new that's colored purple and I have active that's colored green. So I've just um, kind of changed their demo to match what I would want it to look like from what I'm kind of thinking. Um, so, you know, maybe I want to like compare countries in a bar chart by like, you know, kind of see how many new cases they have and active cases they have. So we've done that. So now let's actually go get this real world data. Now, I can't remember. Did, so for this, you need to subscribe to this um, API. And did it like it's it's going to get like for if you do it for the free I forget was this one like you can do like 60 calls a minute or something. I forget what it is, but with the free like this is free to use. Um, let me look at the pricing actually. Yeah. 
So we have 60 requests per minute. That's, you know, that's quite a bit for what we're doing. Um, but just note, like if you accidentally got yourself into like an infinite loop and did 60 requests in a minute, which wouldn't be hard to do, like they're gonna shut you down. So you'd have to like wait a minute for this to work. So a nice thing they have on here is they have a whole bunch of like different languages to use, like um, to like figure out the call. So we want to do JavaScript and we want to use Axios. We could use fetch. That's how you do it with fetch. But yeah, we're familiar with Axios. So let's just do Axios. So notice with this call, we're doing a get request to this um, URL. It seems like we also have a option of sending a parameter of country. So it could do like, a, I guess it's a search param. And if we gave it a country, and that would just pull back, you know. Oh, sorry, I need to do a get to statistics. That's the one I want to do. So on the left side, these are all the endpoints. I can get countries, I can get statistics, I can get history. I just want to do a get statistics. And yeah, I can throw in a country here. And that would just give me back the USA. If I don't pass the USA, then this is going to give me back all the countries. I wonder if we can separate these by comma, like USA. I don't think this is going to work. Let's see if it allows us to grab more than one. I don't know about you guys, but mine has like a little crossover when I try to go to results. It won't let me look at it. On, on right here where it says test endpoint, does it say like you need to subscribe? No, that fixed it. Okay. Yeah. A lot of these, they're going to want you, you're going to have to subscribe. And some of them you might have to like pay or they might have you. You can do it for free, but it would th uh, still ask you to throw in a credit card, which I wouldn't do. Just, just find ones that are free. So, cool. So let's go back and let's grab it. So I'm going to grab statistics. I'm going to go select JavaScript. I'm going to do this Axios call. And yeah, we'll just grab all the countries and we can filter out the ones we want in the front end. So yeah, with this, because what, what you need is you need a, an API key, a rapid API key. And then you also have to be subscribed to activate that key. And this is the way how they, you know, they can check to make sure you're, you know, you're subscribed or you've done less than 60 calls per minute. So I can just copy this code here. Go ahead, just throw this into um, my chart demo. Except with my access call, I'm gonna throw this into my code. So let's go ahead and do this on mount. So we have a class component. So that's the component did mount function. So we can go ahead and do this call. And in their example, they're not using async await. They're using the dot then dot catch syntax. So let's just kind of go through this step. So I threw in my component did mount. I threw that Axios call inside of here and they're just console.logging it. So let's just see if this works because now we're on our own website, so. 
and we're doing an axios.request. request. So it's a little different than like the axios.get. Here we pass it the options and the options is just an object that has our method, which is a get request to this URL. And then we're also able to pass these headers, um, which has our host <clears throat> like, and our key for that. Come back here to my console. I'm logging that. There's my, because um, I'm logging right here. What am I logging? Res.data. So, how do I get um, my data? Like, it's the so here's my res.data. If I look at res.data.response, that looks like that's all my countries. So let's say I wanted some country state const, um, or let's just call this country, or since we're in a class component, I'm just gonna say state equals. I'm not gonna use my use state hook because I'm in a class component. So I just create a state object right here. And let's say I want some country data. By default, that can just be an empty array. Not set state to set state in a class component. I use the this dot set state function, and then I can set any state here. So I want to set this state to res dot data dot response. And then I could do something like this. Um, Country count this dot state dot country data dot length. So I have this country data when this component first um, you know mounts. This is going to be an empty array. But when we do our mount, we start our Axios call. And once it finishes then we can um, set our state and I have this country data and I'm setting that to response.data.response. Why is that response.data.response? Well, when I copied the code, they're calling that thing response. So that's the first one. And when I look at the response, it's this, when I look at response.data, it's this object. And I could also look at the response.data.response, and that's actually my countries. Looks like I'm getting an error, cannot read properties of undefined reading set state. This, that, wait, what? That chart general 35. Why is that undefined? I'm going to throw in a debugger right here. Console. Log. Component did now. Why is this undefined? All right. I want to see um, if the keyword this is undefined right here. I'm like, 
I'm very confused what's going on here. Countries count is zero. Um, very confused by my, this is undefined. Okay, now it's there. Um, very confused why this is undefined right here. So it's defined here, but it's not defined in my request. All right, um, let's do this. This is not defined in seals top request. So what's going on here? I have the this keyword. Now remember the this keyword in JavaScript refers to this component. So when my component did mount, I'm gonna log this. Then also just show you this you know, in callback axios. So I have those two logs just so I can kind of show you what's going on here. We have this, so when I log <clears throat> this, it's, <clears throat> you know, the example where it has props, it has my state, there's that country data, the array is zero. But when I try to log this in the callback of Axios, it's undefined. But I need this to be defined because right here I want to call this function, this.setState. Because that's where I actually have the data. But for some reason, the this keyword right here, and I sorry, I would call it something else because I hate saying this so many times, but right here, you know, this is undefined, which is bad, but I want to set the state here. Um, I'm going to make this an arrow function. Let's try that. Here we go. There it is. Okay. So by making this an arrow function, the, the, the binding of this in JavaScript is a little strange. Um, so that, that's, that's the quick way to fix that is just to make this an arrow function. And now this is defined. So now I should be able to do this dot set state. 
and now my I can tell my state is set because now my my country's count is two thirty six. But yeah, if this is if I switch thirty the line code thirty five back to a function definition and not an arrow function. Now all of a sudden this is not defined. So there'd probably be a way to bind that. I don't know if I can do that right here. What's the little word syntax? Let me see if that works. Yeah, that doesn't work. Oh, well, I found a way to make it work. So I'm going to leave it like that. Um, another thing I could do is probably switch that to a, this component did mount to async and use async await. Then I don't have to use this callback function, but yeah. Just a good little review with class components. Um, so we have state, and if I want to access that state, I can access it by this dot state. Now this dot state's just an object, has some country data in here. So I could do this dot state dot country data. That's my array. Then I could say the length. So there it is, 236. If I want to change my state, I call this dot set state. And you know here, I can also, you know, I could have, I can just add stuff to this state object. So if there was an error, I could like set state error. No error. Let's just do a string for now, error. So I could do something like this. Let's throw that in a paragraph. This dot state dot error. And this dot state dot error. I could do a little basic error handling. Like if I have an error, then let's throw that as a paragraph in there. Tag in the wrong spot. So if I like were to switch up my, um, I don't need that demo URL. If I would like to switch up this URL, so it's like a 404, that should cause a 404 error, which should hit my catch, which should set my state to, you know, some error occurred. And then I'm just gonna throw that in as a paragraph tag. How's that working? That is not a valid URL. Console. It's almost like console.log here. I'm going to get rid of this one. How is this not throwing an error? All right, maybe let's try this. 
I'm gonna switch that back so it's working. I'm gonna screw up this key. Will that cause this error to be thrown? Chart demo 42, sweet, there's my error. Once again, I'm getting that cannot read properties of undefined reading set state. So once again, this is undefined. So yeah, I need to switch that back to a arrow function so that this should be defined. Yay, finally, there's my error occurred because I gave it a bad key. I'm not sure why it wasn't failing when I gave it a bad URL, but um, I'll switch that key back so now it's good. So just a little different syntax. If I wanted to switch this to like async await, so it might look a little more clear. Um, I'll, I'll leave this as a reference. This first one. But as you can see with a class component with like this dot then dot catch getting all this, this not being defined. Let's make this async. Clean this up a little bit. This. Let response equal this await. And again, this dot set state. Put this all in a try catch block. state oh, it's just my opinion that that the async await is you know a lot cleaner than the dot then dot catch but you know still take the time to maybe at least um, kind of understand what's going on here because for example, we might get, um, you know, the, the documentation how um, in Rapid API they're giving it as a, you know, dot then dot catch. All right, so let's go through. I I needed to name since I called this res. I'm going to change that to res dot data dot response. Go back. Cool. So now it's working the same. Let's see the comment here. This is dot then dot catch. Yeah, this can just be one of the little like small issues. Like, you know, you, you come in, we were to copy and paste this, but there might be a little issues with how we use this because, you know, they're not using ES6, they're just using ES5. We're trying to use this in a class component where we want to use the this keyword. And then all of a sudden this isn't going to be defined because um, I'll, the, this keyword works in JavaScript as a callback. It's it's going to kind of get clobbered unless we use an arrow function or we bind it in some other way. So, but we got it working. It's just it's kind of one of those like things you're, you're you know you deal with when you're working with 
other people's work. You know, it's not always so straightforward. Probably would have been, we would have avoided that issue if we had just used the class, uh, a functional component, but it's a good little review. Okay. So the next thing we've actually hooked up our, um, our React app to this API. So now we're actually getting back the data, which is nice because this is like real world COVID data. We didn't have to create the database for it and we also didn't have to like track it, but now we can go use this data in our website. Um, let's just kind of review what our state looks like. So in one object, so we have an array of these objects and where we have, you know, the country. So we're gonna to want to grab the country name. And then we want to, so it's gonna be, if we're, if we're thinking about mapping over this, like I'm doing a country data dot map C, I'm gonna have like C dot country. That's gonna give me the country name, but I also want the active and new cases. So to grab that, that's gonna be c.cases.active to grab my active cases and c.cases.new. So I might want some like, chart data. Let's just maybe throw this in our state too. I'm going to call this like chart one data. So maybe we'll create some different charts with this same country data. I could call this like maybe to be a little more clear, like active um, and and new cases. Give a new chart data. Just be really specific of what this is going to be. So I have my country data. I'm going to want this active and new data. So that's kind of what I was talking about here. We want to do our res dot data. And since I'm using this a couple of times, I'm just going to say let country data equal. I'm going to just throw this into a variable. Then we can map over this country data dot map. So we're going to go through each country. And what I want to like the data I want to create is, you know, I want to create an array of objects that look like this. So it matches what my chart wants. So I want an object with country new and active. And that's kind of what we were looking at in the react. Um, profile view. So I want to return an object that has country. Well, that's c.country. I want to grab new. That was c.cases.new. And then I wanted to grab active. c.cases.active.
Oh, I need my try to like wrap this whole thing. That kind of got a little messed up. So my component then mount, I'm going to grab my data. Once I get my data, I'm just gonna store this country data into a variable just to make my code a little more readable. I'm gonna get my active and new chart data by mapping over that country data, just returning an object that has for each thing in my country data, I'm gonna grab my country, my new cases and my active cases. And the next thing I could change here, instead of using this hard-coded data, now I can use this dot state dot, what did I call it? Um, act, active and new chart data. And there we go. It is, it's working. It's a little, um, is that the US just, oh, there's all. So there's a couple things going on here. You know, it is working, but it's a little hard to read because I have 236 countries that I'm trying to fit on here. So what can we do here? Can you know, potentially make that, you can make it bigger. So make the width 5,000. Let's just see what that does. So that's kind of doing it. Um, another thing that's going on here is, so I do have some countries that, you know, they do have like new and active cases, but like I can't really see them on the chart. Partly this, we have some outliers, I mean the US and then also this all record. So this might want to be one where I filter out this one. So it's maybe like filter out um, this all one, see what it looks like. So before I map, can still keep that there. Maybe I can filter. Go through each thing. Let's just see if we, for now, we can like filter out the all. I think that was the country. Is it not equal all? So remove that one that has all and then map over them. Cool. So now we have like US, wait, what? How does the, that's not right. What is that number? I can't read, is that right? What is that? Is that 19 million? Are there really 19 million cases <laughs> of COVID, like active cases? Is that right? Does that. What? That's what it says. <laughs> that can't be right, is it? That sounds a little, I guess that's kind of close. So aren't we getting like 800,000 a day or something? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that might be right. Okay, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, that, um, you know, it's just kind of how the data is like, you know, we have 
you know, some of these countries that have, um, you know, high cases. So we could, and this would just would be like, you know, something we could decide, you know, how we want to do. So what I maybe can filter out or I don't know, let's, let's maybe try to, let's try to make this a little interactive. Um, I mean, this is probably not the best way to um, show a chart just because it's too much data. So, I, I mean, does anyone have any ideas of how we could maybe filter this a little? We could try to even make it interactive a little. Like we could do a input where we maybe put a limit on, let's do this, let's put a input like we as the user can, um, I think there's there's a couple things we could do. Maybe we could do, yeah, like a max active cases or like a, a minimum. So we we only want to see the countries that have more than, you know, ten thousand active cases. So let's just let's just have a little fun with this. So let's do this. Let's do like a min active count. So if I like type in a thousand and hit enter, it should filter out anything below a thousand. Okay. Um, and maybe another thing, even before I do that, let's sort our, let's sort this data. So remember the sort function, I take these two, um, I give it like, I can call, I can call these anything. We, you'll see this called A and B. It's just like A and B are just two countries. I can think of these, these are two of my objects in my array. And then I'm gonna tell them how I want to sort this. Now, if, if the function I give it returns um, a negative value, then um, I always forget how this, like the order, but if it if it's if it's a negative value, then it's saying I think a is less than b. If this function returns a zero, it means they're equal, and then if it returns a positive number, it means like b is greater than a. So if I wanted to sort by like um, active cases, I'm going to say a dot cases dot active. And since active is a number, I can just actually go ahead and minus b dot cases dot active. I might have this reverse. I don't know if this is going to do ascending or descending, but this will sort it. Let's see which way this sorts it. Okay, looks like it's going. I want it to go the other way. So I just need to switch B and A. So I get my data, I sort it. Now I'm filtering out that all, and then I map over it. Does the order of these function calls matter? Like sort, filter, map? Could I do filter, map, sort? It's kind of a trick question. Or could I, should I rearrange this? I mean, it's working. Let me just make sure, like it's working, right? High to low. I would actually think it probably makes sense to filter and then sort. 
because I think um, sorting is generally like filtering out. I mean, this is a picky, it's like it worked before, but this would probably be a little more efficient because I could filter out any of my things I didn't want and then sort because sorting is usually a little more, um, sorting is definitely more pricey than filtering. But not, not a huge deal. Definitely map, I would want to come at the end. So there we go. So now it's sorted by cases. And yeah, let's do like this min active count. So I'm gonna want that to be some state so we can say like min active count. And then on this input, have a value be this dot state dot min active count and on change let's just create a function this dot min active count changed write this function min active count changed. So when I definitely want to do an arrow function because if this will bind the this keyword, this will take the event. I can say this dot set state. And take whatever I named this key and then active count. dot target dot value let's see if this is let's just see if our input's working min active counts not defined where is that what line was that? Line 30. Probably forgetting this. Oh, min active count. Let's give this a initial value of zero. So that's working, at least my input. Now what I could do in my filter, I'm gonna write, just kind of wrap this in a new line because this might get a little more complicated. So now that I'm wrapping that in brackets, I need to return this. So as long as the seed dot country is not all and C dot cases dot active is greater than this dot state dot min active count, then keep them. That's not working. And oh wait, sorry. What what am I doing wrong here? Any ideas? There's something I can see. I can see one wrong thing right here with this line. You need parentheses around 
no I don't, I don't need parentheses so think about what this if country equals all and my active cases are great greater than the min active count so let's let's remember what filter does if filter returns um true this is where this like this logic gets a little can get tongue twisted or like mind twisted so if this function returns true it's going to keep it so reverse the order of the and statement it's the order doesn't matter it's not the order of the and statement it's the the and statement it needs to be an or statement oh wait no this is not going to do it either crap um it, so is this checking like if all or cases are greater than this dot state min active count or is it checking all or cases is less than the state dot min active count yes yeah, see, I, I'm, i've totally like i i know okay what i want to do is i want to get rid of it if the country does not equal all i want to get rid of it um but also if the active cases is greater than that min active count i have in my um boolean so the problem here is let me just get rid of this all for now <laughs> and then because i i have this i'm like i've just confused myself so if my active cases is greater than that min active count, I want to keep it. Let's just see if we can get that working. Why is that not filtering? This dot state dot min active. Um, you can also take a break now because it is um, 12.20. Let's come back at 12.30. I'm going to figure this out. If you want to stick around and like watch me struggle, you can do that too. But um, I'll figure this out and then we'll come back at 12.30. But if you, if you think you see it, let me know what I'm doing wrong here. Okay. I'm doing this in my component didn't help. That's why that's not working.
You spelled active count wrong on your function. Min actus count. Thank you. I spelled it wrong. I'm going to fix that there too. If you were to make your own div instead of using that responsive container that you took off, would it shrink it everything like proportionally? Um, well, the the reason I'm because I'm hard coding this width right now. Oh, I see you have a width in there. Yeah. I could maybe try to do like. I don't know, this dot state dot, what is, uh, I'm forgetting what I call this stuff. With could be like the active new chart data times 30. I wonder if that would like fix it. I mean, it, the change, the size would change, but then doesn't like that. Oh, dot length. That would like keep the bars the same. I mean, my the size of my chart is going to change. 
I mean, yeah, it's 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 just kind of hard to throw in, you know, two hundred pieces of data into a, a chart. That that's just kind of one something I could do. I probably want to like break this up into different charts somehow. All right, um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, just kind of wrap this up. So I, I figured out the issue. It's really like funny, like I swear, like once I have to stop talking, it, I can like, it just makes it so much easier to find the issue. But what I was doing wrong, um, was I was trying to do the sorting or the filtering in my component did not mount. Now I do want to filter in my component did, did mount because I want to remove that country dot all from that data. Um, but I want to do that when it mounts because I just, I just want to get rid of that. Um, I don't need it. But once my component mounts, it's not going to rerun this function. So I was trying to like filter out my, when I had this count here, it wasn't going to filter it out because that component did mount function was done. So what I did 
let me slack this out so you have it. Um, so what I did there is, um, if we look at this, I added a function here that's filtered by min active count. And I just have a little button here. When you click on it, this is when it filters it. I could have also done this on the on change when I actually type in the input, but I just decided, hey, let's just throw this on a click function. So, um, so I still have my min active count change. That's going to set the state of that number. But then when I click on the button, that's going to um, filter out the data. Now, something just to take note of, I'm going through and I'm going to still go like my country data, that's like the original data I got back from the API call. Now I want to kind of leave that um, the same. Like, I, I don't want to like change that array. I want that always to be there. So what I do when I filter by min count is I'm gonna create a new array and I'm gonna filter out over that. So that's where I do the check. Hey, is the c.cases.active, is that greater than that number? If it is, then keep it. But I also need to map over again and recreate that array of objects. Um, to send to my chart. So I go through, I recreate that, and then I set the state. So now when I come in here, I can type inside of here, hit filter. And you know, now, now it's actually filtering out. Notice how my country's count is still 235. I could also throw in, um, just so we can see it, the active and new chart data count. So when I start out, they're both 235, but once I start filtering, that's down to 115. So my chart data, I only have 115 items in here, but that means I can now like reset that back to zero filter. I guess there might be, so the reason this might be 220 is there might be some that like I have some null values in there when I originally got the data. There's probably some that have that were null. Does that make sense though? Why here? I think it might be um, a little tempting to do something like this and, you know, might not to instead of keeping um, this country data like unchanged, because I could, I could kind of just, you know, skip this process. And it works. Well, let's see if this works. Oh, well, now this is different. This is, would be active. But if I try to go backwards, like if I try to like um, go to zero, because now I have 115 you know, of this active new chart data count. If I try to go back to like the 235, I don't know. I could have like a reset button that would just set that back, but I can only like filter down. I can't filter up now. That's why here I did it this way where I'm mapping, I'm kind of filtering over the country data. and keeping that the same. And then I can map over it. Cool. 
Another just kind of random thing I did was, and this is kind of like a hack for the width. I'm just grabbing my state active and new chart data dot length and times in it by 80. So that way, you know, it doesn't matter how many things I have, the bars are always going to be the same. Let's save this, save. And it just kind of overflows now. Now, this is probably not the best way to display all this information. I like to have this long scrolly bar chart, but maybe we did want this to be a bar chart. So an option we could do <clears throat> is, and you know, is we could just flip this chart. That way it might, you know, at least it's gonna scroll up and down. Or we could like separate this into different charts um, or we could just, you know, but if we wanted, one thing we could do is like a vertical chart. So we could kind of just flip that the other way. But that's just, um, you know, working with charting data, um, it's just, that's kind of its own little challenge of how do you kind of make this visually, visually nice. So, um, so we could try really quick. Let's just try to make this vertical. I'm just gonna take this chart. I'm gonna copy it. Go right here. All right. Let's see if we can somehow just with very little changes make this work. So I'm still gonna do this dot state dot active data. This data key is the name. Remember this I'm calling country. Let's call that country. Um, it's kind of maybe a little weird because they're mixing, like in this example, they're looks like they're mixing like a, a line chart and like an area chart. I just want to do the bar chart. So I'm gonna get rid of this line and area. Maybe switch that to active and go ahead and do another one that was new. Switch up the color so they're different. I don't know. I'm kind of just hoping this works. I'm not sure if it's going to. I do believe I'll need to do this compose, compose chart. So I need to import that. Anything else? Let's just look at it. See if we have an error. Cool. So now we do have like a little um, a, a vertical chart. So and for the height, maybe I could do something similar. I don't need those to be so big. Let's try like 20. Let's see what this looks like. So now that might be um, a little more readable. But this filter should work on both of them now since. Looks like this color is pretty, I could change that color just so they look a little different. Uh, 
Oh, that is so similar. Oh. So yeah, that's just a little demo with like charting, a little demo with um, class components, a little review of class components, um, kind of adding a little random customization to it. But you know, we're doing stuff, we're, we're using a third party li library. We're actually grabbing some COVID data. We're seeing that the US is going a little crazy right now. Um, and we take that data, we can sort it, like we can just grab all the data and then we can sort it, we can filter it, put it into charts. I mean, we could do a lot more with the data we're getting back from just this one API call. If I were to go look at um, that example, go look at the country data. I mean, we could maybe go through and um, I think a, a nice, maybe a, a cool chart would be, you know, we could go through and we could group all, instead of group doing it by country, we could maybe do it by continent. So we could create some sort of chart, you know, with continent data. Um, you know, we might want to go through, I think another interesting, that would be interesting to do because a lot of this data can, you know, it can really get skewed because, you know, the, the US is a big country. There's like, you know, 300 million people here. So it might look like the US has a ton of cases compared to Germany, but, you know, Germany is also small, smaller. So we could go through, we have like, um, like a lot of these, like the USA, I mean, obviously they had like, population data. They have test data. So we could maybe go through with this data and on the front end, you know, maybe draw out some more charts that, you know, aren't just about cases, you know, to total count of cases. Maybe it's like, you know, how many, you know, relative to the population, like we even get like how many tests per million population. So maybe we could like do some math to kind of figure out like, you know, maybe the U.S. has more cases than China because we have a lot more tests or something like that. Um, yeah, it's, you know, this, this data can be, you know, there's a, a lot of different ways to look at it, but like it's, it's kind of cool with like this API call, like we're getting back quite a bit of data. We could do a lot with this. You know, we have cases, active, critical, recovered, total, the continent, we have death information, like death per million population, new and total test information. So, And that's just from like one API call. So this this uh, rapid API, there's, and that's just COVID. I mean, there's a lot of cool like little APIs in here. Do a movie database. I haven't looked at this one. We could just kind of. by search by ID or title. Let's just see if this will let me subscribe for free. YouTube to MP4. It's cool, so yeah, I love a calculator. <laughs> so yeah, there, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, get percentage, okay, that's cool.
anyway a lot of these are probably silly but you know you can probably like some popular like flight data ones there's probably weather ones um trying to think can you think of like for any of your projects like an api call that you might want or like some data i'm trying to think with like the psa if there was like a like a, a pokemon pokemon card um like api where you could like go grab all like pokemon cards so that's something you could maybe like your group could look for um Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just on weather APIs Pokemon. Is that how you spell Pokemon? Look at that. Hard limit. Ah, crap. I'm going to go back to that. So here's one. I, I don't know. Let's see here get many cards, test endpoint. So I'm just doing a get request to whatever this URL is. Card ID, name, number, set ID. I don't know anything about Pokemon, but does that make sense? Could you maybe utilize that? So that's just one object. There's a whole bunch of data on there. So also like, I think this would be um, today as you're exploring or maybe on Friday, I think using for your um, hackathon, that could be like a little cool bonus feature. It's, you know, to maybe pull some real data from an API, from a third party API. Well, sweet. Um, I think that is it for me. Are there any questions? I'll just slack this last little thing out. I think this was like pretty much essentially this one file was what we did today. So I'm not going to create a GitHub repo for this, but I will slack this out. So yeah, if there's no questions, we can take lunch. Time is it? It's um. Let's just call it two o'clock. Just give you a little extra couple minutes for lunch, and we'll see you back at the TA channel at two. Sweet. Cool. Have a good one.